Please stand. May 27th, 2014, Gulf County Board of County Commissioners now in session. Y'all would join me. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank us for another wonderful, wonderful day. Lord, we ask that you uh, let's all keep in our hearts this past weekend we just celebrated Memorial Day for all the military people, both the men and women, that gave their lives for this country to be free. Lord, we ask that you be with this board this morning as we conduct the business and pray for your protection. Bless all our citizens. Bless our law enforcement. Bless our youth. Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning to all and welcome to the regular meeting, a 27th regular meeting of the Gulf County Board of County Commissioners. If any of you here today have has any business before the board, you will be recognized and you will be given your time. Uh, at this time, go up to the public if anyone in the audience have any questions concerning the consent agenda or the information packet. If you do, please rise. If not, does any member on the board have any questions with the consent agenda? All right, I have one. Uh, if you would, turn to page 129 in the consent agenda. Down where it says Article 2, Compensation. Read along there on the second line. It says the sum of two thousand dollars, and it has thirty-five hundred in parentheses. Uh, spoken, Mr. Danford, and we need to correct that. And uh, should be, we're going to replace that with a corrected uh, portion of it, which two thousand dollars will come from grant and fifteen hundred come from county budget. Is that correct, Mr. Danford? All right, do you have the uh, uh, document that, to replace this? Okay, Mrs. Uh, Lanier, or, were you aware of this? Yeah, yes, I was, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, so that's, uh, board members, that's the, we're just correcting this. I don't know if it was a typographical or what, but it, the correct number is $3,500. 2000 from grant, 1500 from county fund. Okay? All right, if no one else has any questions concerning the consent agenda, I need a motion to accept it. Got a motion. All right, we have a motion from Commissioner Smiley. Second. Second by Commissioner McElmore. Is there any other discussion from the audience? Any more discussion from any of the board members? If not, no opposition, motion passes 5 and 0. Oh. All right, our next thing will be uh, Item number three will be the uh, public hearing on the PDR recommendation, May 19th. Mr. Richardson, on this, on this public hearing. Mr. Chairman, um, you all should have a copy of the memorandum from the county planner in front of you uh, with regards to their recent planning board meeting of May 19th. Uh, the only application before them was the uh, agenda item coming back for a final plat approval on a minor subdivision for the Pentel Family Partnership. It was parcel ID 04243-000R. It is the section seven, 16 Township 7 South Range 11 West next to Watermark Way in St. Joseph Shores for a reduced three-unit subdivision from the original uh, application. Uh, it was properly noticed before the planning board. They heard the final plat uh, submission and ultimately voted 4-0 at their May 19th meeting to approve or recommend the approval of the three lot minor subdivision for the Pentel Family Partnership. I mean, that memorandum memorializes that in front of you today. This is a public hearing, Mr. Chairman. 
Anything from the public on this? Input from the public. No input. So moved, public. Mr. Chairman, for the recommendation of the board. We've got uh, a motion by Commissioner Yeager. Second. Recommendation of the board. Second by Commissioner Smiley. Anyone back to the audience? Again, anyone in the audience have any questions over this? Audience, any question from board? Not if there's no opposition. Motion passed, 5 and 0. All right. We're going to change just a little bit from the format here. We have with us today uh, Ron Jones. He and his, uh, he's with the Beasley Allen Law Firm, who is, uh, represents us in the BP claims. He and his family are down, spending some day over on our beautiful beaches here on the Cape. And uh, instead of holding him to the back, we're going to let him come on up where he can go back and enjoy a little more sun sound before he has to go back to Montgomery, Alabama. Ron, if you would come up and uh, maybe give our board members in the audience a little update where we at. Sure. Thank you. It Thank you for coming down and spending your holiday with us in Gulf County. Glad, money. Well, glad to do yeah. it. I'm, I may have some difficulty getting my wife and my children to go home, but uh, nevertheless, um, I'll give you just a few points or a few things to update you on. Uh, number one, um, I still serve on the steering committee. I'm still part of class council for the private settlement. So the point being, I've not moved on. I'm not working on 14 other cases. I'm still working on BP all the time, every day. So. Uh, we're still moving forward. We're still doing everything we can to push this to a resolution. Uh, second, I was speaking with some of my colleagues in Louisiana uh, this week. Uh, they confirmed uh, everything that we knew before, which is that no local government anywhere on a, on a, a parish, a coastline, anywhere else has been having any active discussions with BP about resolving anything. So on the one hand, uh, it's disappointing, but on the other hand, it lets us know that we're not being treated any different than anybody else anywhere. And uh, the last two points I'd like to give you are, the Clean Water Act case continues on track with the federal government. Uh, that should be tried next year. And so while that is a little ways off, we are midway through 14. You may say, why is that relevant? It's relevant because we believe BP wants to try to get that situated with the federal government and the Restore Act and all the NERDA aspects to it uh, before they move on to other matters. Now, they may still be able to move on to something like a local government, like us, before then, but most likely they'll try to get that done first. So that's moving up on the agenda. We don't know if it'll be settled or tried, but that's a, a big event coming down the pipe. And then uh, lastly, uh, the private settlement, uh, which, again, you may say, why is that relevant to us? Uh, it is widely known that BP wants to get the private settlement situated back whatever way it's going to be. Uh, before they deal with anything else. There was a recent ruling by the Fifth Circuit uh, which denied BP's request to have the entire Fifth Circuit hear the class settlement uh, certification. So now if they want relief, they have to go to the Supreme Court. And as we all know, that's, that's it. That's as far as you can go. The U.S. Supreme Court is as far as you can go. So they're one step away from, I hope, losing. Uh, but the, again, the relevance is that's one step closer to having that issue behind them so they can turn their attention to local government. So that's where we are today, and if there's any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Uh, I'll hang around, and if, if any of the commissioners have anything they want to talk about, I'll certainly be willing to, to discuss whatever that may be. Anyone, anyone from the audience? Staff? Members? All right, Ron, thank you for... Okay. Come down and again come back to see us. Thank you. Well, I, obviously Tell I will. Family, will you? Well, I, I mean, uh, there's no doubt about that. Thank you. Right, thanks, sir. <laughs> All right. Not to let you come to this lady, but I want to. <laughs> okay. Now we will move into uh, county staff business. Uh, Roberts, do you have anything today? Sir, is it Lawrence? I don't have anything. <coughs> Thank you. Terry? No, no, sir. Here, good. No, sir, not today. Come on, Mr. Stanford. Come on, somebody. I need a uh, mark. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing good, Jim. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, okay, nothing for Marshall. What about you? Come on, David. No, sir. <laughs> all right, Mr. Summer. That will break the streak. <laughs> all right, we'll get a bite over <coughs> later. All right, Mr. Uh, 
Carney. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <coughs> the first item I have uh, on my list this morning is I, I had mentioned earlier the pledge and proclamation of civility. Uh, you all uh, instructed me to follow through with the recommendation of the Florida Bar. I prepared that um, pledge and proclamation. You last did this in 2011. Prior to that, you did, I believe, in 2003. Uh, the Florida Bar encourages all of our local governments, both city and county, to adopt it on an annual basis. Um, I've prepared that for you. I'm going to pass you each a copy of it, and then I'll read it for the record for your adoption. <clears throat> Leanna, I'll have a copy for you, too. Okay. Commissioners, the proclamation and pledge reads as follows, whereas the open exchange of public discourse is essential to the democratic system of government, whereas a cornerstone of democracy, Americans have observed certain rules of behavior generally known as civility, and whereas civility derived from the Latin word civitas, meaning city, and civis, meaning citizen, is behavior worthy of citizens living in a community or in common with others, and whereas displays of anger, rudeness, ridicule, impatience, and a lack of respect and personal attacks detract from the open exchange of ideas, prevent fair discussion of the issues, and can discourage individuals from participation in government, and whereas civility can assist in reaching consensus on diverse issues and allow for mutually respectful ongoing relationships, and whereas civility can uplift our daily life and make it more pleasant to live in an organized society, and whereas a city, county, and local government law section of the Florida Bar urges the adoption of a pledge of civility by all citizens in the state of Florida, now therefore be it resolved by the County Commission of the County of Gulf that the month of May is proclaimed as Civility Month and call upon all citizens to exercise civility toward each other. Mr. Chairman, if you can, uh, for comments and public discussion prior to your consideration right. for adoption. Thank you. Do you have any comment or any input from the public audience? All right. Staff members? Board members? All right. Get across the mic, I move, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I need a motion. I motion. All right, Commissioner McLemore, motion. Second by Mr. Yeager. Is there any other further discussion? Any more discussion from the Not as any opposition to the resolution. If not, I have an oath. Mr. Chairman, thank you, sir. The, the second item I have is an update. Uh, Mr. Michael Spellman has provided uh, recent correspondence. He is uh, was unable to attend today as he had a, a family vacation planned for his anniversary. Um, he is out of the area. However, he did write and let us know that he'll be here on June 24th for our regular meeting uh, to address you all um, and provide you with a summary of his findings as well as his recommendations for uh, your future actions. Um, in anticipation of that, uh, I'd encourage each of you, if you have questions, I'd be happy to um, have one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, with Mr. Spellman and each of you commissioners, uh, either prior to or after you hear his summary. He'll also, as Mr. Jones is staying after, uh, just to address any of your concerns or individual questions. Third item I have is with regards to uh, Gulf Pines. Um, at your last meeting, I had indicated the city had reached out to the administrator and myself with regards to um, pursuing a resolution on the Gulf Pines uh, site within the city limits. Um, spoken with Mr. Gibson, um, they're closing in on a proposed resolution for the IRS in terms of the federal tax liens. And in that effort, um, they're looking for the city, or I'm sorry, the county's cooperation on two fronts. One with regards to the um, pursuing tax mm -hmm. deeds for the tax certificates that have been sold. In addition to that, they are looking for the county's cooperation on the um, clearing of the property, presumably in terms of clearing up the asbestos issues that they've had. Uh, Mr. Gibson has uh, discussed proposed numbers. Um, he is going to go back uh, with the city's authority, as I understand it, and seek a resolution that would both address the IRS tax liens as well as the private liens against the property and their ultimate goal of cleaning, subdividing, and then selling these parcels, which would then add uh, parcels to the roster for the county, the city, the school board, so on and so forth. Um, I do not have uh, final numbers from the city right now, um, but we will continue those discussions. If you have questions, commissioners, I'd welcome those. and. As I get more information from Mr. Gibson, I will share it with all of you as well as, as, well as with the administrator. Uh, Mr. Attorney, okay. I have one. 
we need to got a lot of gray area here work with the city attorney and let's see if we can get this thing pulled on down a little bit uh, I think it's a little bit broad here and uh, identify some of these we really need to know what they expect out of us what we expect out of them I, I heard you say IRS tax liens in there so that means the federal government's involved in this so let's uh, just err on the side of caution and come back sure I, I, I know in discussing with Mr. Gibson that he is obviously there's a lot of moving parts a, a bunch of interested parties uh, the county's one of those um, and as he's trying to get them all in line to get everyone to agree to a proposed resolution, it starts with obviously the federal tax liens. And from there, if he can get everyone else's cooperation, um, I think their goal is to eventually get these added back to the tax roll. Right? Mr. Yes, sir. Mr. Attorney, yes, sir. Just, just keep me abreast on everything going on. I'll, I'll be happy to do that. I'll do it. One from the audience. All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the next item I have is a resolution uh, in discussing with Mr. Uh, Commissioner Yeager. I'll hand it to you. I, I don't know, Commissioner Yeager, do you want to introduce and, and comment on uh, your sure. FAC president? And then I'll read it into the. Sure. Our Florida Association of Counties uh, President, Brian Deloche, is running for NACO, uh, second VP. Uh, it's, if he gets elected, which I think he will, we've worked hard for him, you know, with the different uh, states. But if he gets elected, I think it'll be the first time ever that the state of Florida folk has, has been involved and will be uh, the president of the National Association of Counties. And it's it's critical because uh, the the National Association works with the Florida Association of Counties in getting things done for our local communities, for our local counties. And so his leadership in this role will will benefit Gulf County in in some way, fashion, or form at the federal level. So we presented this resolution um, and uh, would like for the board to adopt it in support of Brian's running for uh, NACO president. I'm glad somebody would want to do it. I, I certainly wouldn't want to be tied tied up with all the issues with it, but I'm, I'm glad that Brian's wanting to get involved, and he's a great guy and, and, and works hard for the community. He's a county commissioner from Leon County. Okay. I got a motion on the table that we accept that. A motion by Commissioner Miley. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Yeager. Mr. Mr. Right. Mr. But from the audience. If, if you will, either we can read it by title or we can sure. read, it, read the um, actual resolution, but it, we'll make one available to the public. And if you will, I'll just read it by title. Right, go ahead. I'm, right. We're ahead of ourselves. It's a, a bit. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, it's a resolution of the Gulf County Board of County Commission, whereby recognizing the contributions of Leon County Commissioner and President of the Florida Association of Counties, Brian Deloge, and in support of his candidacy for second vice presidency to the National Association of Counties. Um, we'll, we'll make a resume uh, that he has provided in his candidacy, as well as the resolution available, if anyone in the community would like to have a copy of that. And that's it by title, sir. Okay. All right. Now, we've got our motion. We've got our second. Anything from the audience? Not Commissioner, have any? Uh, but on as if when he, let me, let me say this. Uh, we feel very confident he'll be elected. Then he will elevate on up and become the president of the National <coughs> Association of Counties. And that's all 50 counties. No opposition to this. Uh, Pass 5 and 0 resolution. All right, Mr. Attorney. Mr. Chairman, uh, just updates on some contracts with regards to uh, your solid waste management and collection. Uh, we've provided Waste Pro with the proposed contract. I believe Rick is with us today in the audience. He is. We'll um, get him next. And we had a uh, very productive conference uh, wait with Waste Pro on Friday um, in the final details, and we're hopeful to hopefully have that executed prior to week's end with regards to that uh, awarded bid. Uh, the other is with regards to your HCP. Um, we've also provided Cardno with the uh, proposed HCP um, consultant services agreement, um, and that too we're hopeful to have something signed uh, so we can move forward with an actual organizational meeting, which is one of the scope of services that are provided in the contract. We will notify the community and notice uh, an invitation to everyone in the community that wants to attend that initial organizational meeting. Um, where the consultant will be there and talk about the scope of the project over the next 10 to 12 months. Um, and we're hopeful to have that sometime in June. Um, that's all I have at this time, Mr. Chairman.
I have nothing. Thank you, sir. All right, before we go into the <coughs> uh, Rick, would you please, as representative of Waste Pro, would you please come up and uh, I'm going to put you up a little further up, but I want to wait till the attorney <laughs> address right. the issue. Mr. Chairman, thank you, sir. Give a uh, little lady, give give her your name and who you uh, represent. Rick Payne with uh, Waste Pro, and uh, I just wanted to come in front of the board and bring them and bring y'all up to date of what what's going on and and so All on because right. it is a big transition. Uh, so far, I think it's gone pretty good. Uh, there's always some hiccups, as, as we all know. One of the things is that uh, we've completed about 99% of all the residential carts to be delivered. Throughout the county. Throughout the county. Uh, our service doesn't start till June 1st, but we actually started running the routes yesterday just so that the guys could get familiar with the areas. <clears throat> One of the things that uh, we've seen, because people, uh, some residents have called our office, we based our delivery on the information that we received from waste management. And uh, if uh, they were, uh, residents were paying for one cart, that's what they got. Uh, if they've gotten more than one cart through waste management, if you get any calls, they just need to call our office so that we can set them up uh, accordingly. Um, other than that, uh, we should be on schedule. Uh, each of you, I think, know that if there's any issues, please feel free to give us a call. But I think it's gone okay. Uh, and uh, to my knowledge, the only regret I have is I didn't, uh, and I, I messed up, I didn't publicize it like I should have. And uh, I had it ready to be publicized, and it just got by me. But I think uh, Lynn with, uh, with the county and Don's office has really uh, provided uh, some good publication on that part. And other than that, uh, we are pleased, the company's very pleased that uh, <coughs> you selected Waste Pro. And uh, m most of you know that we will do everything that we can to uh, earn that trust that you've given us. So I just wanted to bring you up today. Thank you, Rick. Uh, just, uh, I'm going to turn now to Commissioner McLemore here. He has a question, and I have a question. Go ahead. Just one question, Rick. Are we still going to be on the same pickup day? If you're Waste not <coughs> on the same, if your schedule's not on the same pickup day, there should have been a yellow decal put on the cart indicating the day. The only, uh, I would say about 90% of the customers will remain the same. But if you look on your cart that was delivered, there's a little yellow decal that's marked the day if you're going to have a scheduled day change. Brand now, new. I've provided uh, Lynn with the service days for all the areas. And I think... Uh, I, I just got that this morning, and I will email and, and, and get copies. To so let you all know what areas will be serviced on what days, and then you can see, actually, if there is a day change. I like my new can. Huh? I, I like my new can. I got a pretty new can. <laughs> I haven't had a garbage I haven't had a new garbage can in years. Well, I know we wanted to provide because the can, the carts w w have been out there for so long. We wanted to make sure that we provided new carts. Anything else, Commissioner? Rick, a couple of three things. Uh, first of all, uh, if you want to make it, because people watch this on television and uh, on their computers, do you have a number that they could call? Uh, Lynn has, or they can call here. At we put it on the TV public. Sure, okay. Uh, Lynn did, and it's got our telephone number uh, on it. If, if they have any questions, they can call here Absolutely. at the, uh, uh, our office here, 229-6106, and Mr. Butler or Ms. Lanier can uh, maybe ask them. Secondly, it's my understanding, talking with you, that your trucks – uh, I know up in the uh, we were Hitchcock area uh, with one of the, I don't think it was waste management, but uh, they picked up their cans with an arm, and a lot of times if the can wasn't just right or so-so, but it's my understanding Waste Pro will, there will be a human being, it'll take the can, roll it over, and dispose of it and place it back. Yes, sir. Is that correct? So yes, you sir. won't be using this arm to reach out and pick We're up? We're not going to use an automated truck. That's okay. what they refer to as an automated, automated truck. We will be using a rear loader with a man on the back of the truck. Well, that's better. 
It surely is. Okay, anyone else? Uh, Commissioner Bryan. One question that um, folks have raised with me mm -hmm. is the size of the container that they feel that it's smaller than the container. It's, it's a little bit wider than the waste management can, but it is the same size it as the, the waste management size. can. It, if you look at two, the waste management can is a little bit taller, but we're a little bit wider. Okay. Yeah, okay. one more quick. Okay, one more qu uh, question, Rick. There's a number on that can. Yes. A phone number. Is that the number? No, no, can the number, number is not, not on the container. Mm -mm. The, the only number that's on the cart is the number that was assigned to that address. Okay. We, we listed every mm -hmm. uh, cart to a resident. And uh, as you can see here, here's the list, and I'll make this available for Lynn. But we're, we, we, this is our delivery schedule, and off to the side is the number of the cart. Okay. Chairman? Yes. Um, Rick, could you give that 1800 number now for anyone who's watching? Yeah, this? it's here. It's 872 1800. The reason we didn't uh, want to put Please. a number on the carts is sometimes when, if a cart needs to be replaced and we grab a cart, uh, you know, because the carts are interchangeable in certain different areas, we may bring a cart in from Jackson County and it will have their telephone number on it and then people get confused. So that's the reason why we didn't want to put a, a number on a cart. Uh, but uh, what, what we're also, to let you know, uh, our bills went out because we bill in advance and in it is a letter to every residence about our company, what they need to do, uh, and the number and so on that uh, they can call. So every resident should be receiving that, if not today, by tomorrow or Thursday at the latest. Okay. One other thing. Yes, sir. Uh, you just used the word advance, which is good. Now, I pay quarterly. I'm in the county. I'm not in the city. I pay quarterly. And I think I paid for April, May, and June. Now you're t I'm with waste management. Now going to Waste Pro in June, explain well waste management they're supposed to reimburse people in the county for the month of June. Am, in fact, am I that, correct or am I anywhere close there? Yeah, you are correct, Mr. Chairman. In fact that's in our letter that we sent out a number where they can call uh, waste management. If if the residents don't get a, a refund for waste management for them uh, by the middle of June or certainly by the end of June. Uh, that's why we put this out. They can call and make sure that they get that refund. I'm sure waste management is in the process of doing that now. But they should get a refund from waste I, management for the month of June. Mr. Hey, Mr. Chairman, other? I did receive an email from waste management. They did assure me that they were refunding all, all, of, our. all of the funds from June forward that have already been paid. And then the, the last thing I have, I just want to let uh, everybody know that waste management will be picking their carts up this week. Uh, uh, hopefully by uh, Monday of next week, all the waste management carts will be uh, picked up because I know it can be confusing. When we delivered our carts, the reason I wanted to deliver them a week early so that there was no period where somebody did not have, have a, a can, you know. And I know it's confusing because they got two companies out there, but I certainly didn't want them not to have a container. So that's why we delivered it early, but hopefully by the end of the week, uh, they'll be down to the single company. All right, any questions from the, anyone in the audience? Not, Rick, is that it? That's anyone it, sir. Here? All right, thank you, sir. Yes, sir, thank you all. Okay. What are you? Here? Yeah. Good, they're good. All right, we're going to the board here. Any, who wants to go first? Commissioner? All right. Miley? Hey. Oh. Hey. Go on. Come up, sir. <coughs> Projects going on in District 4. Uh, let's start with the water project. Okay, just an update? Yes. Clay Smallwood, on. Clay Smallwood, Purple Rish. Uh, the, the majority this is in reference to? The city, of Saint, the, yes. city of Saint the city of St. Joe is a water project. The city of St. Joe, okay. Right. Right. CDBG project. Most, the majority of the water lines are in the ground. Um, they should be starting, with the exception that would be Martin Luther King, uh, between avenues A and D. And they should be starting demolition on that this week. Uh, as they get the demo done, they'll start putting in those water lines. 
also the stormwater, uh, you know, in between avenues A and D as well. And then uh, in the meantime, they're also going to be bringing on line the uh, the majority of the rest of the water lines that are already in the ground. So they'll start, they have to pressure test and flush them and clear them through DEP and that process takes a while. So they'll, they'll be working on that while they're working on Martin Luther King. Um, the contract should be substantially complete or their work should be substantially complete by the end of June. And uh, that's, that's the target they're shooting for. Uh, let me ask a question. Uh, that different people was asking me questions about the driveway being cut up. That'll, once they get the pressure test done on the lines, then they'll go back and start putting in driveways. They just didn't want to start doing driveways, and if they have a leak, they have to find, dig the driveway back up again. So uh, that'll be that'll be part of what's happening over the next several weeks as okay, well. Okay, on the uh, project on the Martin Luther King, when they plan on getting started with? The, well, they're starting the demolition this week. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, Clay. That's all I want to know. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I do have a, an issue that kind of came up. I think we need to discuss it and and get it resolved. It's concerning the community center up there uh, in Honeyville, and that's a cleanup issue. Um, I don't like getting them phone calls late at night, you know, who's going to clean it up and who's, who's going to do this and who's not. But what I'd like to recommend to the board, if we do a free service or, or rental on that building up there that whoever we let have it they're responsible for cleaning it up you know i think that's the least that any organization can do or anybody you know we're giving it to them free they should be able to clean it up and uh it caused me some like i say it was an issue for me you know a little bit and i just want to get it resolved so uh with that being said, and I'd put it into a motion that whoever, if we lease it out or, or let somebody have it free, we need to get them to sign a contract or whatever that they're responsible for cleaning it up. Am I on the right track with this, Mr. Attorney? I, I don't want to get any more phone calls concerning a cleanup on the community center. You know. Yeah. In, in a motion. I think it's only okay. fair. I second. Wait a minute. Who, who, who put it in a motion? Yeah, I put it in a motion that whoever we, whoever has it leased or whatever, that they're responsible for the cleanup. Uh, can we kind of step a little further and say, unless otherwise they have got in touch with our, you know, made prior arrangements with the, I'd rather not do that because I'm going to tell you, it followed back on Carmen. Okay. Got That's you. why I got the phone call that night, you know, at 9 o'clock at night. I'm in the bed, you know. I got it about 730, yes. And, and my crew, my, my, it followed back on my work crew. Sunday morning. And I had to detour my work crews, pull them off of something else to go clear, get it cleaned up for the following night. So it, 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 was, a, it was a pretty big issue with me. All right, let me. You gonna you give a motion on this? All right. If someone want to second it, maybe for discussion or second. second All right, that's good. Now, uh, I'll hold you right here, uh, Mr. Michael uh, uh, Butler. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Just a comment uh, on those when you waive a fee on the Honeyville Community Center for for the paying customers, you you collect two hundred dollar cleanup charge, and they get that back if they clean it up. Any recommendation or just for consideration, if you're going to give it to them free or waive the fee, the only way you're really going to get it cleaned up is you got two hundred dollars. If they cleaned up, you get the money back. My, just a comment. Okay, I, I'd like to I'd like to start off soft with this, Mr. Butler. Let's try let's try this approach. Is the way I like to approach it. Let's try this, and if if it don't work out, then we can go a step further, like you're talking about, and make them put up the deposit. You know, but to begin with, I'd like to try this approach. Okay, the floor is open for discussion here. Your second was discussion. Any? I don't. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I like the idea of a deposit, uh, but if we try it soft, and we'll see how it goes. I mean, you're getting more of the phone. I, I don't get. Yeah, we get them. I don't get those phone calls. Uh, so, but if, well, I think we probably would. Um, 
I also do not think that our work crews should be cleaning up at any of the uh, park or any of the other buildings that are used by private organizations, even if they have it for free, I think they should clean up and our work crews should not be spending time cleaning up after the event, which I, I know that that does happen. So if that's what it takes to compel the cleanup and then if they don't clean up, they don't get it back and that is used to pay for the cleanup, I think that's a very common way to operate. If any input from the audience here, if any of this facility or any of the facilities here. Uh, Mr. Ward. Yes, dear. Um, referring to what Ms. Ryan just said, <clears throat> if you come up with it, that they must, it, there should be a time limit on it if they haven't done it within, at, within that time. M Mr. Chairman, we need her name for the record stated, please. Clear. All right, now let's go back. Vision motion was that we uh, send him a letter or uh, uh, they have to sign a just a contract. They will clean it up. That you, I don't see why putting up $200 and giving the money back. Well, I, you know, I think $200 may be a little bit steep. I w I'd be willing to go 100 you know. Wait. What's the fee right now when somebody runs 200? 200. 200 dollars. Yeah, a, a cleanup fee. I think you're yep. gonna have to come I back and do it later if you don't do it now. Let's just do it then. Let's let's get it over. That right. that'll solve the problem. I put that into the motion then. That, All right, you're gonna you modify know. your motion. At, yeah. uh, anyone that uh, let me just go over this where the clerk can get it back. One, if we waive the fee, they still must put up. It's mandatory. They put up a 200 dollar deposit, and if they clean it. When they clean, they get the money back. If we have to go in and clean it, they don't get the money back. Hey, that, and that's my motion. That, that'll, that'll solve it. I think that'll fix it up, and we won't never have to deal with it again. All right. Well, your second stand with that's, that. That's right, still anybody still. else here? Okay, any further? I think we're on the right track here. If no uh, opposition, motion passed 5 and 0. Oh. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Anything else? I'm yes, sir. Right now, Mr. Good. All right. Oh, Commissioner Bryan. Yeah, I have um, one thing. Um, last at the last meeting, uh, I made a motion to advertise the Wimico Place lots, and I just wanted to come back and um, clarify that a little and discuss it. I know sure. we ran the ad in the classified ads for the sealed bids on the lots, and my concern is that it's not adequate for people to know that those lots are available if we're only running it the one week for the sealed bids. And um, in looking at these lots, I know we paid uh, 29500 per lot or 59000 for the two adjacent lots um, together. And there was a recent sale, and the person who purchased that property paid about approximately $1,675 per lot. So um, my question is, I, I know, Mr. Butler, you said that these lots were purchased with ship funds, and if we sell them, we could put money back into the ship program, which I think is, is a good idea. But my concern is if we have such a, a, a big loss on those lots, are we responsible for the difference to the ship program? And also, well, I, I haven't, I've just done a cursory search and I have not been able to find the approval for the lots, for the lot purchase. So my question would be is how they were approved and why we were purchasing them. What was the purpose? And whatever that purpose was, if we have to sell them at a loss, shouldn't we consider hanging on to them and using them for whatever the purpose that we purchased them? So I just think that there's a lot of um, um, questions regarding the purpose of these lots, what the intended purpose was, and if we sell them at just a, at a huge loss, what are, what are the consequences to the county and the SHIP program? <coughs> oh, 
uh, Mr. Attorney and Mr. Lowry, what would the state <coughs> housing agency on these lots to, to determine what we could do? The lots were bought. Uh, after Danny Bolden with the CDC approached the county commission and asked to be able to buy some lots to go into a land bank for affordable housing. And the commission gave approval to take ship money and buy the lots. And this is, you know, several years old. This is backing up five, six, seven years ago. <clears throat> but the county commission agreed to, to buy the lots at the suggestion of Danny Bolden with the CDC, the Community Development Corporation. And <clears throat> dead bomb, the bottom fell out of the market. The um, the subdivision owner, I think, went belly up for one reason or another. Whatever happened, um, uh, we wound up with some lots that were not valued as much as what the county paid for them. It was paid with um, ship money, some uh, state housing initiative program money. Uh, I think Mr. Turney can give you better details than I can, but he and Mr. Lowry have communicated with, this, with the state, and they have determined w with a proper appraisal at that point in time, with a proper appraisal, that we could sell the lots for that amount of money to return that to the trust fund. Then wouldn't be anything to Gulf County would owe. But I'd, I'd rather Mr. Attorney answer that part of the question. We, um, I think there's no liability on Gulf County's part once we pay a certain amount of money back to the trust program. Um. So we we would you, you're saying we would get an appraisal prior to selling them. Okay, Commissioner, uh, we actually uh, in 2010 or 2011, upon uh, the county taking back over that ship program, one of the first things that we uh, were tasked with was taking the CDC's programs and reaching out to the Florida uh, authorities on where we were at in terms of the allocation of the ship funds. Uh, two projects, uh, the Wimico and the Williamsburg, were the parcels that the county, through the SHIP program and the CDC's recommendations, had acquired. Um, we first uh, reached out, and this commission uh, engaged Mr. Cheney, Michael Cheney, um, as a consultant to work with uh, Mr. Lowry and myself and the county to try to uh, rectify the uh, SHIP program so that they can continue to receive the funding. Um, and the county has now since done that. The first thing was the Williamsburg parcels, which the county uh, was able to refund the trust account for the ship funds for those parcels. Um, the second was the Wimico. Um, the commission then authorized the county staff to go out and get a comparative market analysis on those parcels in Wimico. We provided that to Mr. Cheney, um, and then we received a th uh, authorization from them uh, to, uh, if if we were able to successfully sell the parcels, to refund the ship program trust fund for the county in the amount that we recouped on that those two sales. Um, and then the remaining balance of what the ship funds were used for those purchases would not be a liability of the county. And we have that from Mr. Cheney and the Florida Housing. Um, so that's been approved. Um, and this is obviously the final step in that is getting these out there and, and sold. Once those proceeds come in, they'll be less, presumably, than what we, re we uh, use the ship funds for. But those will be refunded to the tr trust fund. And then we'll confirm that for the Florida Housing and send them confirmation that we've refunded it for the full amount we received for the two parcels. Okay. Um, okay. The other the other part of this that concerns me is that the the plat is a platted community, and the plat shows a road down the center of the community, and there is actually no road. Nothing's been cleared. There's not a dirt road. There, there's no improvements done on the property, and. I, I'm not certain how they were able to get final plat approval. I know there was a letter of credit in place to back the building of the road and the other improvements. And apparently it was never drawn on. But there is a dedication on the plat where the county has accepted responsibility of maintenance of that road. So as private individuals purchase properties that are supposed to be on that road, what is the county's liability to build the road? I'd be happy to look into the issue, Commissioner. I, I said I, it predates me in terms of dedication, but I'd be happy to review that and try to get you some information. I know that in discussing with the Florida Housing and the CDC, the county taking the program back over, 
from outsourcing or contracting it out. I think the first uh, thing the county explored was um, the CDC had a plan in place to build affordable housing back there on those two parcels. And, and part of that process was what ship funds could be allocated to complete those improvements to get them the utilities off of that road. Um, and ultimately it was determined, I believe, that the, the further investment of ship funds to improve that to get those parcels uh, ha affordable housing built on them versus the other alternative the county took, which was to recoup what costs, refund the trust account, and then use those funds for other projects. Uh, but beyond that, in terms of the dedication and the improvements on the roads, I'd have to look into that for you. I understand. I'm thinking that with these two lots, that we probably need to advertise them more than one week to try to get a better price. And if we cannot get a decent price, should we look at keeping them for the purpose that they were originally purchased for, for affordable housing through the SHIP program? What is the most um, economical use for those lots? But in any event, I, I don't think that the one little ad in the classified is enough to let people know that those lots are available for purchase. Mr. Chairman, if I may, if I may, um, oh, the, the ad is scheduled for two publications, the 22nd and the 29th. So there, there is two. And uh, thank, thank you, Ms. Norris. Norris but thank also, I, I still think just that little classified ad just may not be enough. It, it might be. We might come in with a decent may. price, but I think we need to be very. Just for clarification, um, we started approximately two years ago putting all of our county notices in the legal section. So all of our bids and all of our um, all of our notices are placed in that legal section just for the um, economy's stake and not to spend uh, large amounts of money because the advertising costs did go up dramatically. And so that's why we started advertising everything in that section. And, and that does make economical sense. I'd like to see possibly the lots or any other properties that we have for sale on our website, which would be free, that people could look and see what was available. It is on the website as well under bids and RFPs. And, and maybe I know that we're short-handed in, in that area, but I think maybe we need to be a little bit more um, user-friendly with people finding what's available. And, and anyway, my, my point is I'm very concerned that we spent $59,000 for these two lots and we may net um, just a very, very small percentage of that in the sale of these lots. So what I'm asking for is that we, we just slow down in selling the lots and maybe even consider that they might need to be used for the SHIP program. Uh, my one concern with this 1675, that's what we have a bid for now. No, um, uh, the other lots surrounding were purchased in a larger sale, mm -hmm. and it averaged to 1675 a lot for the other lots in the platted development. Okay, what you recent sale? Uh, what you brought to light is the fact here. This road, and I, I haven't seen this. So I'm, I'm, I'm not. They purchase us and then hold us to the uh, this road, which I read or whatever it is, and you have to implement that in there. That's going to be six thousand dollars uh, there. So I don't know. I don't know, uh, Mr. Turner. Can you shed any more of this or? I think we really got mushrooms out on sure. this. Sure. All I can speak to for the commission is obviously what I worked on went with the project probably about two plus years ago when yeah. we started working on the Wimico two two lots. Now the, let me let me interject. Yeah. The Williamsburg. That's all. It's all resolved. It's all been. Resolved. Yes, sir. With okay. the authority of yes, Florida Housing to take right care here, of that. That's it. That's it. All so right. these are the only other two. Okay. The CDC had a program or a project in place that they were vetting out, um, and the project was that they would acquire these parcels and then. Ultimately, their goal was to develop them into putting affordable housing pro uh, housing on these these parcels. Um, when that project stalled, um, the, I know that when we got back into the and took it back over, they looked at the investment on the parcels 
and the construction costs, and they actually looked at the value of what improvements you would all put on those parcels. I think it's $350,000 of ship fund you all received on an annual basis, if I recall correctly. And then the 70 thousand dollars they were talking about constructing affordable housing projects on each one of these parcels was an additional $140,000 on top of the investment in the land. Um, and ultimately, we went back to Mr. Cheney and the Florida Housing and looked at that if that was approved. Um, and I believe at the end of the day, they looked at the investment of over $200,000 of the three hundred and fifty on two affordable housing units versus taking the land plus the improvements and looking at that versus um, selling the parcels and refunding the trust. And we had written confirmation that the county wouldn't incur that liability for the deficit of what they were sold, what were they purchased for and what they were sold for. And that's, that, and that's like I said, over two years ago, but that's what I do recall. Um, and I know you, you probably can't answer this right here, but I would wonder if there was an appraisal done at the time that we purchased it or how that pricing was done. Maybe that's something sure. you can look at. And did, did I understand you correctly with what you just said that the cost of bringing these lots um, up to a, a standard to be prepared for construction would be not cost effective? The, and this is going back, I think, a ways, but the, we, the uh, Mr. Cheney actually came down and there was a community group appointed by this commission, um, a few, the, uh, a contractor, a realtor, I think county staff, probably two or three years ago, Mr. Cheney came down, did a, a presentation of the SHIP program as the county took it back. The CDC had implemented a proposed plan to improve these parcels. And so when the county inherited this program back, they were left with these projected plans of how they would improve these parcels. When Mr. Cheney came down, he made the presentations to the county staff in this uh, community group and ultimately they determined that these were the costs to improve each parcel. They projected out the costs. It, on those two parcels back in Wimico, they were, the overall project cost would be better part of 60 or 70 percent of the annual allocation of the county ship funds and ultimately they determined that the other alternative would be more cost effective. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, the only thing I'd say here is I think, you know, all these are good points. I think what we need to do is continue through the process. If we advertise, if they're truly going to advertise two weeks, if, if two times, if that's good enough for you, let's see what comes in. And then we can evaluate, you know, do we need to keep these things and, and develop them ourselves with the ship funds or, or do we need to sell them? So I think if we, let's continue through the process and see where we're at. I believe we have that CMA as well from when it was done by the county, so I'll certainly make that available. I think Mr. Lowry has it in the ship files and for those parcels, so we can make that available to you as well. And, and Mr. Chairman, sure. if um, Mr. Novak could also check on that issue of the road and the dedication on the plat and our responsibility as the county. Well, we're just going to let it ride its course. And let the, okay. let the attorney look sure. over that whole deal. I mean, we're going to go through the advertising or through the local. Let's see what we catch. All right, anything else, Commissioner? Just, just one or two items. Uh, we had mentioned at the board meeting last time about the uh, Gulf Coast Parkway and the alignments, and we no. said we needed face-to-face. -face. We actually reached out to the Secretary's office, FDOT, and, and got a response. I go up today at 1.30 to have that meeting. Uh, I think Don and, and Jeremy are going to go with me, and, and we'll, we'll, you know, to talk about our, our case and bring all the points out that I think that we need to be, we bring out and uh, that need to be brought out and we'll, we'll go from there. I'll report back to the board and at the next board meeting we'll, uh, I'll t let you know how it goes. Okay. Right, anything else? Uh, the only other thing is C30 is just about complete. They told me they'd be out of there by June the 1st and I think they're really, really close. They're, they, they, they started working on our extra slip lane. They haven't got that done yet. but. That'll probably add a few days to it, but uh, everything looks good. And if you haven't rode C30, you need to ride it. It's, it's, it looks great. Uh, on the, on the uh, DOT projections, we'll have that uh, road extended from Money Bio, where it's widened, all the way to the county line in next year's money, which begins July the 1st. So I think in the next year or so, we'll have that. We'll all ha also have Indian Pass Road. And in two years from now, they'll do uh, Cape Sandblast Road from that attachment out to the rocks. And so that'll just about complete the widening and all in, in that general area. And if, if, if you've been down here lately, you see the amount of traffic on there, so it's all well needed. So FDOT, 
while we're going to go up there and argue our case on this uh, Gulf Coast Parkway, I want to reiterate, reiterate we have got a great re working relationship with them, and I, you know, I, I, I want to reiterate to that. Uh, in, in the last couple of years, DOT's probably spent in the neighborhood of $10 million in, in Gulf County, and that's, that's, uh, gonna that's spend done some well. Here. And they're going to spend some more. Oh, so, in the county. Uh, I'll let you all know how that goes. That's good. That's all I have. Uh, the only thing I have is uh, that sitting had a little spare time yesterday and my sitting out on and my swing in there and there was some kind of traffic on 71 going north so apparently we got a lot of people down our beaches hopefully they spent a little money with us we hope so and uh maybe we've had a good uh all day here that's all i have today at this time we will turn to the public if anyone in the public has anything like to address before the board, if they would, please step forward. Uh, Dr. Hardman, you have the floor. Pat Hardman, Coastal Community Association. I'd like to brag on you a little bit. I know that's unusual, but I really want to do this. <laughs> I want to tell you, we a couple of weeks ago when you meet and we brought up the concrete plant that was leaving our county and the problem of loss of jobs and the problem of construction when that left. I want to brag because you took that uh, economic development back into the county, and I know some people were looking askance at you, but you, because you all did, your staff kept that jobs and plant here and they worked quickly efficiently did a beautiful job the folks that were leaving us love us now so i just wanted to brag on your staff for what they were able to do in a very short period of time and i think that's telling us things to come as they get out here and uh, attract new businesses as well but we can't lose what we got second thing thank you for cleaning out the ditches uh, on Cape San Blas Road, uh, we had them just water was coming all the way across, and we have mountains of, uh, <laughs> of debris out of the ditch, so we've got some room. Um, we really appreciate both of those things, and uh, glad y'all did it. Uh, I do have a question for you. Uh, I've asked a couple of times to have the notices of this meeting. Uh, are these meetings uh, sent out to us so that I could get them out? Um, I have problems remembering, and if I have to go on your website over and over to try to find things, and particularly special meetings, that's difficult. Uh, we help with your communication with Coastal Community Association, getting information out, and hoping that to stop the perception of y'all not wanting them out there. So if, if we could possibly get those notices sent, I will get them on out to the public as well. Miss um, Pat, we are sending the special notices I'm out. I'm not there. getting them. Um, we'll you, check see why you're not meetings? But special meetings and regular now we're not sending agendas they're on the website is there but a way we are I can get the special. agenda as well because that would help well they're on the website that's been our problem all along they come they get kicked back because people aren't keeping good um, email addresses with us or they can't um, download to their email servers that large capacity of pay of and so we're having to break them up, send them again. So that is the mm. problem why we're putting them on the website. Let me check But with the you. notices, we're, we are sending them out. If you're not getting them, we'll check into that. Okay, please do. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, last thing is Coastal Community Association has an annual meeting. We've had to change that meeting. I had invited you all to come to it. We've now moved it to July 12th, Saturday morning. Uh, we appreciate everybody anybody coming this will open to the uh, community not just the coastal community association members and love to have you there uh, 10 to 12 at the, at the golf club thank you thank you Dr. Hart. anyone else anyone else so move to adjourn mr chair Here we go thank you. Thank you. Maybe that's it well, no, don't be an hour